Hello everyone, welcome to the Zardom's Total War mod overview. And what a mod this is guys, hopefully you will see from this overview that this is one of the most outstanding historical mods that has ever existed. I'm so impressed, this mod sets the standard, sets the bar so high, it's incredible. It's absolutely fabulous mod, beautiful, it's not complete. It's in the beta, the version I'm using here is 1.5. So let's dive straight into it guys, let's have a look. There are two campaigns here, first of all there's a main campaign and this one is historically driven. With lots of historical events from what I understand there are certain things you can and cannot do. There are certain historical events that will take place such as Black Plague, 1348 and all the rest of that. There's also other campaigns and this one is more like a sandbox campaign, freestyle, and you can play as the papal states here as well, I believe. So this is totally different. First things first, right? As you enter the mode, very super friendly. As you can see here, you have factions breakdown. Easy to read, quite large font. Gives you an overview. How many settlements you control, what religion you are, who your allies are, if you have any, who you are at war with as well. And then a quick description of what's going on, the faction background. As you can see from the map, before we start, this is regional centered historical mod. It's not stretched from Portugal to India or from Scandinavia to, you know, Sub-Saharan Africa. No, 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 no. It knows exactly what it wants to do. And what it wants to do is cover this large area here where our Zardoms are located. Now, first of all, what is a Zardoms, right? What is that supposed to mean? For those who don't know, Zardom, guys, derives from word Tsar. Tsar is a Caesar or a Kaiser, is an emperor, essentially. In Russian, for example, Tsar would be pronounced as a Tsar. Tsar derives from Tsar, which is Russian for Caesar. So essentially what you've got by Zardoms, what it means, Tsar means an emperor or a Caesar. Tsardom is just an empire. Zardom is an entity ruled by Tsar. So it's an emperor ruling an empire. So Zardom's total war, what it essentially means, empire's total war. So let's dive straight into it, guys, and let's have a look at this map and what a map this is. Okay, so here is you greeted by this welcome text. Now, what they introduce here, and this is something I want to mention separately. This is attempt by the team to dip into the internal politics. We don't have internal politics in medieval to as such. Therefore, they introduced the noble houses. You have the ruling noble house. On top of that, you have another three, four altogether. So those from other three that are non-ruling, they will have problems with loyalty. You'll have to manage them carefully, make sure loyalty doesn't fall too low or else they will rebel. This is perfect. And I hope maybe, maybe, maybe one day we will see remastered version of medieval to maybe they will add something about internal politics which which is quite frankly blank there is something in rome 2 and may attila is not perfect but there is something so here this is what they've done now regional titles ancillary system this is will be familiar to total war uh, veterans basically you place your character in a region and if he stays there for a turn and if he f you know meets certain qualifications certain criteria he will receive a title of lord of this and that and, and the other so the siege this is a historical event taking place relevant uh, pertinent to your faction your faction leader can also acquire uh, the title of the holy roman emperor i believe and it tells you a little bit about this as well not all of the factions by the way will be entitled there are catholic factions there are orthodox factions and there's also muslim factions this also only applies to catholics now hardcore gameplay or not now this is guys brings some elements of you know deslevult or, or other mods where you have things like you know troop upkeep in foreign enemy territory or when they are laying siege as well and also you have a cost for changing the capital is 4,000. It's not overly complicated. This is one of the beauties, I think, of this mod at this stage. It's not heavily overloaded, you know, with all this compli complex stuff that sometimes you get the impression with other mods, this is just there for the sake of being there. So there is something else happening, and this is also to do with your chosen faction, as you can see. Settlement besieged. One of your settlements is actually under siege. Now, what I wanted to show you is this. Uh, have a look 
I wish I could rotate the camera, we cannot do it. Have a look at this. And this is what I absolutely adore. Unique settlements, models for the campaign map. Not just Buddha has it. Look, they split Buddha into Buddha and Pest. They I added a fort here and it's just every single capital, I think from what I've seen, and I've only looked at a handful to be fair, is presented. Some other big cities as well, they have their own unique campaign map models. The map itself, just look at these textures. Italy, huge, and you can see here the uh, mini map as well. Huge Italian peninsula. It goes into Sicily with three regions. Then you have Corsica and Sardinia. And look at the beautiful mountain chains as well. Look at the beautiful ground textures. This is the fields, fertile land here in Po Valley. Look at the Alps. And in terms of elevation, another point I wanted to make. This map, I think, is just strikes that perfect balance between flat and overly done maps because elevation on a campaign map influences your battlefields. So you don't want it overly elevated, but you don't want it flat. You know, you don't, it just kills immersion. So I think this is from what I've seen in historical mods. This map strikes this perfect balance between not being too flat, but at the same time not being too elevated either. In terms of pathfinding, there are passages here. I don't know if I can show it to you in Hungary, but when I was, for example, here closer to the coast in this area here, do I have anyone here? I am sure God is with you, noble. Yes, as you can as see, there's plenty of room I am sure for God choking points, etc., etc. Et so very, very realistically done. Very beautiful in terms of elevation. Perfectly done. Beautiful ground textures. But, 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 the crown jewel here, guys is this let's look at this beauty this is constantinople they didn't stop here they added galata as well how cool is that and they added settlement on the other side as well for good measure so like if this is not like 10 out of 10 then i don't know what is let's have a look at the other i played with ragusa as well this is ragusa this is ragusa for you they've added forts as well across the map like so there are lots of and lots of forts look at venice this is beautiful venice <laughs> was that an attack so beautiful models as well custom made as you can see this is the family member this is i think this is a bishop this is one of the regular priests i think and this is also a bishop this is a diplomat i believe let me mention in terms of how it actually runs very smoothly with me i haven't gone into the middle game yet i'm just about to get there but it runs smoothly loading times are really quick i'm on ssd here i have no problems whatsoever between the turns very very quick processing time the 2d art here is beautiful as you can see the unit icons are all well done also very very interesting they have a lot of character i think the portraits character portraits those that have been done some of them haven't again this is beta some of the uh, resources are from vanilla game so you will see for example the spies the ages these cow? haven't been yes. worked on they haven't been done yet but the characters the family members and such they have a uh, young elizabeth the first here the portrait yeah there's also lots of scripts in this mod by the way they've added ancillaries here for historical characters of the time some of them i believe will or were included as uh, diplomats as merchants perhaps or religious figures however others were not and you can receive them faction leader faction heir and others and i like the style of it they match they don't clash so as soon as they will fix these assets as they create custom assets for this, replace the vanilla ones, they all fall within the same style. This is another one. Very unique, but also they blend well. Going back to the factions, what are the factions available? Well, there's, I think there's 25 available, and I do hope they will add more. They added Albania recently, I think. So there is Hungary, there is Kingdom of Croatia, Bosnia, Ragusa is tiny, it's here, you can barely see it. Serbia, Zardom, you have Albania, Principality of, you have Bulgaria, Wallachia, Moldova. 
and there are interesting mechanics with the Roman Empire. There is a civil war going on, so basically you control this part here. This part is controlled by the rival factions, so you have to uh, overcome them. There is also the scrip that actually leads to unification of the Roman Empire and the coronation of your new leader, and that actually will change the icons, I believe, the models of the faction leader. So Duchy of Athens, then you have Knights of St. John, and you have four Muslim factions. There's Ottoman Empire, uh, I'm not sure it's an empire at this stage, but it's there. There's also Emirate of Aydin, there is Karaman Emirate, there is also the Golden Horn that is also Muslim. Now Venice, beautiful Venice, uh, Duchy of Milan, Republic of Genoa, a very interesting faction there. Uh, Florence, you've also got Naples, Trinacria that it controls Sicily here, Duchy of Austria, Duchy of Bavaria and Swiss Confederacy. Now in terms of factions as well, there are crossroads here for Bulgarians and for the Serbs. Kingdom of Serbia here starts on the verge of becoming a Tsardom, becoming an empire. It also faces threats from massive, massive uh, Hungary here. Faction that you may want to look into, it's a Tsardom of Bulgaria. It also starts an interesting position. There are lots of opportunities open to Bulgarians because the Byzantines are uh, split here and busy with their civil war. So there's a lot of prospects there for your expansion. However, be mindful of these guys again. Hungary poses a threat to both Serbia and to the Bulgarians. Let's have a look at the battlefields and what it looks like on the battlefield. There is a script as well in battle, so you have to activate it. Now, look at the beautiful units they've got. Detailed indeed. And also, what I like is this. They replaced these arrow markers, green with yellow. I think it's actually much better. It's more subtle, it's not so in your face. At the same time, you can't really miss it, but it's not so distracting as the green one. More toned down, and I do appreciate it. Also, I think what they've also done, you know the flags, unit flags here, they are smaller, I think, than the standard. So yeah, the, as you can see, the archers, they can deploy stakes, some of them, not all of them. So the, all the units, let's have a look at the units, close up, let's have a close look. So they look quite detailed, lots of work has been done on them as you can see, beautiful, very colorful. Some of the assets from other mods, some of them I believe, the faces from Mount and Blade as well. The unit cards, unit icons, they're also all within the same kind of matching style. So they don't clash, you know, when you can see bits and bobs from different mods combined together. These are all custom made from what I can see. And they're all very, very stylistic and all with the same kind of vision of uniformity that the models had in mind. There's some gunpowder units in the mod and this is the small. So the mod is led by Valakian, uh, I believe, and there's also other numerous other developers are involved, modders involved, Il Duce, Michel, Vink23, many, many others. They also have this beautiful loading screens as well, and as this bar fills, you will see Zardom written here. It's so obvious that this mod has been worked on so hard with such a dedication, you know, desire to stick to historical accuracy. It's pretty, pretty amazing. So this is it guys, this is Zardom Total War for you. Go check it out, download it, support the modders in every way you can. It's a fantastic mod. And again, it sets the standard, the bar guys, so high for new mods out there. Now this is unbelievable. This is still in beta again. This is version 1.5 I've got here. I will be definitely returning to this mod in the future. It deserves so much more exposure. Highly recommend. We'll be definitely keeping an eye on this. Thanks a lot for watching. Please sub to the channel, that helps a lot, and I shall see you in the next one.